In this video, I'm going to review one of Conveyor's more powerful compatibility features, and that's in the use of blocks and translating blocks between Rhino and Revit. Uh, blocks are collections of geometry uh, that can be instanced throughout uh, your model. So each of these um, curtain wall elements that I've described here in Rhino are blocks. I have two block types. If I type in block manager, Inside of Rhino, you can see that I have a unitized panel for glass and a unitized panel for solid, and those are col containing a number of geometries. So if I double click into one of my blocks, you'll see that I have some support structure, um, some cross members, um, as well as some uh, objects representing metal panel surfaces or glass. Now, uh, blocks can contain a number of other bits of information as well. If I click on this block, for example, you'll see that this instance of the block is being assigned under the component family category in Conveyor and is also being assigned to the generic models type. So if I were to re import this into Revit, one would expect that this becomes a generic model assembly of some kind. If I double click into the block again and I start selecting on these elements, you'll see that we also have some subcomponent information or subcategory information. So what we can also expect is that the block can contain subcategory information. And so when the Revit family is built up from this block, it will contain all the, that required information as well. Um, there are a number of other elements inside of this uh, model. Um, we have a couple of indicators for floors, levels, and some grids, which will uh, come across into the Revit environment. So I'm going to jump over into Revit now, and I'm going to go to the Proving Ground tab and navigate to the Rhino Conveyor tool. Uh, we're going to use the Rhino Conveyor tool to make a direct connection in to the 3DM file, in this case, unitized curtain panel uh, block example open that up and you can see that it then is going to give us the element listing um, we have a few levels as i showed earlier grids um, some floors and then these generic models are the instances of the blocks and we can see that they are uh, blocks because they have block unitized panel solid and glass um, indicated in their uh, information column of this element list so in order to go through this process of bringing the blocks in, I'm going to go to a 3D view here, and I'm simply going to click Load Rhino Objects. And it's going to say I have 46 elements total, and do I wish to continue? Yes. And it's going to identify that, hey, there are some block instances here. Would you like to translate those block definitions? And what Conveyor is going to do is it's going to reach into the Rhino file, and it is going to uh, find those definitions. So you can see I can select which ones I want to load in. I can choose both or none. In this case, I want to you know, choose both of them because I don't have them loaded in. It's going to reach in and it's going to translate those blocks into component families uh, inside of Revit. Um, this is extremely powerful because if you have a series of blocks in Rhino that are describing different assemblies, you in effect can treat a block almost as if it were um, kind of a, a precursor to a family and you're then able to translate that entire assembly and have it named appropriately and named alongside the block uh, in Rhino. Um, and it can be a pretty powerful tool. Um, and what you'll see Conveyor do is it's, it's going to go through a series of operations here to first um, translate those blocks, um, load them in as families, load them into the project, and uh, it's going to give me an alert here very soon on when that translation is complete. And the speed of this is going to depend on the complexity of your block. Um, and if it's a, a small block with a couple of elements, it'll be quite fast. If there's a lot of elements in your block, it might uh, be a bit slower. But here you can see it says two blocks have been successfully converted to family objects. I'm going to hit OK. It's then going to start going through and draw in the levels, the floors, and then it's going to place those block instances in the model. So what you can see here is it's recreated um, these pieces. And if I hover over, you can see that it is converted that block into a generic model component family with the appropriate naming. So that, that name, uh, unitized panel, solid, or glass, um, are corresponding back to that original uh, Rhino block definition. 
Um, if I go into, say, my object styles, and I go down to generic models, what you'll see is that those subcomponent categories are also being listed here. So there's our glass panel, there's our exterior panel, there's our primary structure and secondary structure uh, subcategories as they were defined in the block. So if I wanted to do some overriding of information, say I wanted to beef up the, um, the, the projection line weight to three over here, um, and hit OK, that is going to increase the line weight of that portion of the block. Um, so I have some ability to kind of edit some of the visual styles there. If I go to ray trace mode, what we're going to see is that this is going to start rendering things according to materials. It has actually translated um, some of the materials and mapped them over into Revit as well. Um, the way that that has occurred is if I go back into Rhino here and uh, you know double click on this glass family, for example, and I choose this panel, you'll see that there is a material um, assigned to the layer. Um, you can see up here we have a glass layer, a steel layer, an aluminum layer. And if I scroll over here, we have a couple of materials. Um, so those materials are assigned, um, and what Conveyor is going to do is it's going to look at that material name inside of the file, inside of the Rhino file, and it is going to attempt to map it to an existing material that has the same name inside of the Revit environment. So if I click on this um, panel, for example, you'll see that a couple of material parameters have been created and it has successfully found that there is a glass material in the Revit library, and there's also the steel ASTM A992 material in the library, and it has matched them and assigned them accordingly. So this can be a really powerful way for you to uh, bring over block information and leverage it in this kind of intelligent way. The other thing that's really interesting about blocks uh, and how we're going about translating them is that if I double click into this family, um, the resultant information inside of this family is native Revit geometry. If I hover over, you'll see that it's classified as a freeform element. Um, and if you're dealing with things like extrusions, um, this geometry is to some degree editable. So I can edit uh, this uh, after the fact, and if I wanted to, and, and reload it in. Um, I can also you know, perform Boolean operations on this geometry if I wanted to, or change up some things, maybe perhaps constrain it. Um, there, there are a number of, of things you can do uh, with, with this particular workflow. Um, <clears throat> we've seen uh, teams leverage blocks to describe extremely large assemblies um, and wholesale bring them in in this manner. We've also seen teams do kind of this activity, which is you know, to find the component parts of an assembly, um, in this case a unitized uh, curtain panel system, and translate that over as these native uh, uh, family elements. So hopefully this provides a, a good starting point for getting you to think about blocks um, and how you might start to organize your Rhino project and Revit projects using block information. We see this as being extremely powerful and a, a very interesting way to start to manage uh, compatibility of more complex assemblies across the Rhino and the uh, Revit environments.